Feel outdoors already. Sheila was just commenting last Sunday about how well behaved our little babies are. I don't know how you do it. I don't know what kind of shots you give them for the... No, I know you don't do that, but... Well, there you go. I just jinxed it. Thank me very much. It's okay. I used to, I used to have to preach over screaming kids. Unfortunately, they were my own. But uh, I know when Carolyn was uh, not much older than Wyatt, um, she would um, often in the service when she saw me would uh, out break out in a, a chorus of dad, 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 which made me feel both good and bad at the same time. We are looking at... John's explanation of the Christmas story in John chapter 1, and we are focusing on different aspects of it. Um, if you want to turn there, John chapter 1, we'll read again, verses 1 through at least 4. My glass is here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him was made, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it or overcome it. This morning, I want to focus on this word, life. In him was life. Uh, let me share a few things about this word in the Gospel of John that may interest you. First of all, John uses the word life 37 times, twice as much as any other book in the New Testament. The closest is 17 times. <clears throat> so life is a very important concept in the Gospel of John. Almost all of these references, except the ones where Jesus says he will lay down his life, all the other references to life refer to eternal life, not just living. For John, as a matter of fact, there is no life outside of Christ. How many of you have felt at times that in your life you were just going through the motions? You were just existing. Just kind of you get up, you go to school, or you go to work, or you go through your routine day after day, and then you go to bed and you start it all over again. But you really don't sense there's any reason, rhyme, purpose. You're just doing it because you don't know what else to do. Well, that's not the kind of life that God or Christ want you to have. They want you to have what Jesus called abundant life. It is eternal life, but the word eternal is a little misleading because in John's concept of life, eternal life starts here and now. It keeps going into the future, but it's here and now. The source of that life is Jesus. Now think about this. There are only four things 
that you need for life. You need air, water, food, and light. You need those four things for life. In the Gospel of John, what we see is that Jesus provides all four. <clears throat> for instance, air. In John chapter 3, Jesus talks about life from above, life through the Holy Spirit. The word spirit can be translated breath or wind. So Jesus is the air we breathe. He is the water, John chapter 4. He offers the woman at the well living water. In John chapter 6, he says he is the bread of life. Let's see, there's air, and there's water, and there's food, and there's Jesus, who is the light of the world. So Jesus is life. In John, we find he's the one who created life. Nothing was, was made that has been made without him. And without him is in the position of importance, of emphasis. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. He is the creator. He is the source of life. Most of the references to life in the Gospel of John refer to Jesus as the source of this life. I won't go through and read them all, but just know that Jesus is where you find life. We are told that this life is radiant in uh, chapter 1, verse 4, and in him was life, and the life was the light. Okay? The light of men. So it's radiant life. It's abundant life, John 10, 10. We're told in uh, John chapter 17, verse 3, in, in Jesus' prayer for his disciples that uh, this life comes through knowing God and Christ. We're also uh, told that the way to maintain this life in John chapter 15 is to abide in Christ. We are the branches. He is the vine. Except you abide in me, Jesus says, <clears throat> you will not live. There's no life outside of life connected to Jesus. So, I guess what I'm saying is when you're going through this Christmas season again, Advent's supposed to be a time that refocuses our attention on what's really important, hope, peace, joy, love. You know, if you don't have those things, there are no presents that can take their place. There is nothing else that can satisfy. Um, we see it around us all the time, don't we? Don't we, Tony? We see it around us. The, just having stuff isn't enough. Just giving stuff isn't enough. Unless we have these qualities in our lives, we really don't have the life that Jesus wants us to have. How do you keep from going through the motions? Let me suggest something to you. <clears throat> Sheila just had another knee replaced, as you know. 
And although it's a painful process, it's also a process that she was looking forward to because in the long run, it's going to remedy her situation, her problems. It was also a blessing because it, 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 this one we didn't have to pay for. <laughs> the other one we, we did have to pay a good bit for, but this one was, it was a gift. It was free. Uh, what am I saying? Whatever's going on in your life, if you will take just this little change in perspective, instead of thinking that these things are just random, that things just happen, if you will look at your life and, and ask yourself what God is trying to do in your life, look for how he's working in your life. It will change the way you look at your life. When I get up in the morning, sometimes I have plans and sometimes I don't have solid plans. And I know that there are other men in this room that are the same way because when we took a trip together, we were flying by the seat of our pants. We weren't sure from one minute to the next what was going to happen. We kind of had an idea, but we didn't have a real specific agenda. But when you look back on things, even things that seem random, you begin to see how God is working in your life. Um, I never would have seen myself in Tennessee, no matter how much Josie and Bill tried to build it up. I mean, you'd have thought this was a promised land, but I did visit, so I knew it wasn't quite what they were telling me it was. It was better, right? <laughs> it was different. But, you know, in, in the circumstances of my life, as I look back on it, I see that God had a plan for me to be here with you. You may not understand that plan right now, but I see it a little more clearly. What is God doing in your life? What is he, what opportunities is he, is he giving you? What, what trials, <clears throat> excuse me, are you facing that um, you're uncertain about why they're in your life, but God has, has them there in your life for a reason? You need to trust him. You need to look to him. You need to depend on him. And you need to believe that your life is in his hands and he has a purpose and a plan that you may not understand right now. And he's put people in your life for a reason. You may not always understand that either. But he has you there for a reason. In uh, 1 John, this is what John says. By the way, 1 John is also full of references to life, and all of those references in 1 John refer to eternal life. But in chapter 5, this is what John tells us. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 
I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So where is life? It's in the Son. If you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. How do you get this life? Whosoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you go through the Gospel of John, and even in the epistle, you see that this life comes through trusting in Jesus. Some people make that out to be a one-time thing. You come to an altar, you say a prayer, or you sit in your seat, you say a prayer, you ask Jesus to save you and to forgive you, and in that moment you trust him to do that. But that's misleading because that's the beginning of a trust that has to keep on. It's not just believing once, you have to continue to believe. Is believing sometimes hard? Have you ever been in a place in your life where you didn't feel that God was there? You felt like you were in the dark. <clears throat> you felt like you didn't know what was going on. You, you didn't know if you could even trust him anymore. That's when you have to cling to faith. You have to continue to trust. Trusting isn't just about when it's easy. It's really about when it's hard. But you have to keep on trusting and believing and hoping. We're told in this gospel that we should make this life a priority. John chapter 6 let me get back to John, verse 27. Do not work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Did you get that? These people had been fed. This is the 5,000 that had been fed. Jesus had broken the bread and fed the multitude. And they came looking for him again because they got hungry again. Guess what? Jesus wasn't there to just continue to give them physical bread. He wanted them to understand that they needed more than that. He was the bread of life, and they needed not the food that spoils, but the food that endures to eternal life. In another place, in uh, chapter 12, verse 25, Jesus replied, verse 23, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. <clears throat> now, understand that when the Jewish people talk about love and hate, often what they're really doing is making a strong contrast. It's like if you don't hate your father and mother and brother and sister and even your own life for my sake, Jesus says, you can't be my disciple. 
wasn't saying that you should ha literally hate your mother, father, brother, sister, or yourself as we think of hatred, but that his, your, your love for him should be so great that these other loves pale in significance. And so here, you've got to give up your own life. If any man will come after me, Jesus says, that person has to do what? Deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And finally, you like that word? Now, usually when I say the word finally, I really do mean it. Okay, so finally in John chapter 4, when Jesus uh, offers the woman at the well living water, and then after he deals with her, she runs off to the town to tell the people about Jesus. And they come back out, and as they're coming out, Jesus tells his disciples, look, look upon the, the fields that they are white unto harvest. And uh, this is what he says, four months more and then the harvest, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. He's talking about these people that are coming to him from the city. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. One of the privileges that we have because we've experienced this life is to offer it to others because we want them to have eternal life. There are some important things in this world, but nothing is more important than eternal life. Absolutely nothing. Your eternal destiny is more important. Pardon that pun, destiny. It really wasn't. Your eternal destiny is more important than anything else in your life. The only way to it is through Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want this life, you have to come through Jesus. You have to trust him for it. You have to continue trusting him for it daily. You have to maintain your relationship with the vine. You are the branches. Branches die when they are cut off from the vine, right, Tony? I've seen him <clears throat> carrying those branches. They look green when he brings them and dumps them back there. But they don't stay green, do they, brother? They get pretty brittle and dead pretty quickly. Life, abundant life, that's what Jesus offers you. And he is Listen, the only source of if life. If you don't know Jesus, you are not living, you are just existing. But he wants you to live. Let's pray. Thank you.